You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Way of Energy with your host, Ken Lee. Ken is here to help you discover the truth through an integration of the science, religious, and spiritual technologies. Through these technologies, Ken will empower and inspire you to perform at your peak. So now, please welcome the host of The Way of Energy, Ken Lee. Hi, I'm Ken Lee, and this is The Way of Energy, how emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. You are listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, spanning the globe with over 50 million listeners on the World Wide Web. I welcome listeners to call in and offer their opinions and observations, too. Who knows? You might learn something about yourself. If you'd like to call in, please call 866-451-1451. Grab a pen. Here's the number again. It's 866-451-1451. Now, today, we're going to be discussing the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Oh, yeah, the FISA memo that was recently declassified and released by Congress after a year-long investigation into alleged FISA warrant misuses. Now, uh, let me explain. The the North American language is full of funs and puns. I mean, the language has many different meanings for words that maybe sound the same, but they all have different meanings, like two two or or two so each meaning has uh, is different depending on the context in which they're placed for example i could say we two are going to the movies but without pictures you wouldn't be able to tell what the meaning was so the two of us it could have been the two of us meaning two or also meaning we also your mind would have to figure out which two we were talking about So our language is full of things like that. So as we have our discussions, we will be defining words in the context of their use by the subjects we are analyzing. So keep that in mind. And please, during the show, if I say a word you do not clearly understand, don't assume you know it. Just look it up or call in and ask me and we'll talk about it. Of course, I want to put this disclaimer out there. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I have no degrees in mental health. I'm an observer of human behavior, uh, a coach with a radio show. You can call me um, a Jaffo. Those of you that have seen the movie Blue Thunder know what that means. Although I discuss religious technologies, I'm not an advocate of any particular religion, philosophy, or scientific discoveries. It's just information. You decide what's true for you. But... <clears throat> Before we get started, I wanted to find some words I'm going to be using. Now, I use the concise Oxford English Dictionary 11th edition. Uh, the first word I want to talk about is the word projection. Now, projection is the unconscious transfer of one's own desires to another person. Now, pro- projection is used a lot in politics. One candidate will say something about another one, and before you know it, the initial accuser is found guilty of what he claims the other person was doing. (laughs) For example, the campaign between Clinton and Trump, the Democrats were touting how violent the Trump supporters were, then come to find out during an undercover investigation that the Democrat Party was actually hiring people to start fights at Trump rallies. So that's projection at work. That's a good example. Now, we'll also be using emotional tone and energy level. Now, I may be interchanging the use of these words, but they are references to different technologies I will be using throughout my analysis. Emotional energy is a reference to Dr. Bruce Snyder's self-perception chart and energy leadership levels. 
it ranges from level one, apathy, level two, anger, level three, forgiveness, level four, compassion, level five, peace, level six, joy, and level seven, absolute passion. It is also clearly explained in Bruce Snyder's book, Energy Leadership, and I recommend people picking that up and and reading it. It's a really great read. Now, emotional tone is a reference to L. Ron Hubbard's tone scale written about in Science of Survival and many other Dianetics reference books. The tone scale is closely related to the energy levels, but it goes into more detail on the predictability of behavior and improvements for it. And you can find a copy of that at the scientologycourses.org website. And I recommend you pick up a copy of that. Uh, you can print it off and or keep it on your desktop and you refer to that as we have this discussion. Now, I will also be comparing the attributes of the social personality and the antisocial personality. And this information is contained in the Scientology handbook, Causes of Suppression by L. Ron Hubbard. Now, I recommend people get a copy of that, too, uh, and, um, and, and other Dianetics uh, information technologies. Now, on with the show. Now, what's all the fuss about anyway? This FISA abuse memo seems to be laying out what we suspected anyway, just using a simple line of common sense thinking, a kind of if this, then that kind of thing. Of course, our interpretations of our environment are part of our education and viewpoint, also our energy level and emotional tone at the time of the observation. We always look back at our past to something similar and see how we respond then. Then we pull that information to the present and interpret our current observations. Yeah, I know it sounds complicated, but it's really simple once you think about it. Now, the FISA abuse memo is basically a summary of specific information used by the Department of Justice to justify a warrant to spy on a current presidential candidate. It points out that one of the main documents used to justify the warrant for electronic surveillance was actually an opposition research document bought and paid for by the Hillary campaign and the Democratic National Committee. Now, if this is true, then it exposes the use of police powers within the federal government to influence the will of the American people by creating the suspicion that the presidential candidate is being influenced by foreign entities. When in fact, as exposed in the memorandum, the opposite is true. But regardless of how we interpret the memorandum, the reaction surrounding is what will be our point of discussion during this show. Now, I want people to keep in mind as we're as we're talking about this is that the the government is given certain powers to do certain things and the FISA uh, memo or the FISA um, law was used and created to protect the American public from unauthorized searches and and uh, seizures by the federal government. So we'll look into that a little bit too as we go along. So uh, keep that in mind as we talk about this. Now, another thing I want to say is that these are these are just. It's just information that I'm providing you here. It's not my opinions. Uh, It is my observations, but it's not um, based on any anything other than what we're going to be using as our dialogue here. So now what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to take a break. And when we get back, we'll go into detail how to identify the attributes of the antisocial personality as described in the Scientology handbook, Causes of Suppression, by L. Ron Hubbard. Now, when I was studying this technology, I was fascinated by how important it was to be able to identify antisocial personalities. When I was a bodyguard, I dealt with these persons uh, all the time, and they are really dangerous. So when we get back from our break, what we're going to do is we're going to go into detail on the antisocial personality and how that relates to the FISA memo. 
You're list- I am Ken Lee. You are listening to The Way of Energy on BBM Global Network and on TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language, and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. All right, welcome back to The Way of Energy, how emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. I'm your host, Ken Lee, and you are listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If you'd like to be a part of the discussion, you can call in by using the number 866-451-1451. Grab a pen. Here's the number again. It's 866-451-1451. Now, before we went on our break, we were talking about the FISA abuse memo and some potential implications surrounding it. And I told you when we came back, we were going to talk about the attributes of the antisocial personality as described in the Scientology Handbook Causes of Suppression by L. Ron Hubbard. Now, when I was studying this technology, as I mentioned before, I was fascinated about how important it was to identify the antisocial personalities. I tell you, as a bodyguard, it was very important for me to identify these people really, really quickly because they are very, very dangerous and they comprise about 20 percent of the population. So in the Scientology handbook, Causes of Suppression, L. Ron Hubbard states that when the legal and political structure of a country become so as to favor such personalities in positions of trust, then all of the civilizing organizations of the country become suppressed and a barbarism of criminality and economic duress ensues. When I read this, I was inspired to educate people on this personality type and identify these personalities within our government leaders. Now, that inspiration led to the creation of this show. Now, the attributes of the antisocial personality cannot be used all by themselves to identify this personality type. You must also uh, consider the attributes of the social personality to form your conclusions. So we'll discuss both types here and compare, compare them to the typical responses surrounding the FISA memo. Now, let's get started. The antisocial personality has the following attributes. Number one. He or she speaks only in very broad generalities, meaning they say, everybody thinks, everyone knows. And such expressions are in continual use, particularly when imparting rumor. From this source, the antisocial personality has manufactured what he or she pretends is the whole opinion of the whole society. Now, number two. Then such a person deals mainly in bad news, 
critical or hostile remarks, invalidation, and general suppression. In other words, they're, they gossip, uh, they bear evil tidings, they're rumor mongers, and things like that. Now, the antisocial personality also alters to worsen communication when he or she relays a message or news. Good news is stopped, and only bad news, often embellished, is passed along. Now, a characteristic and one of the sad things about the antisocial personality is that it does not respond to treatment or reform. In other words, if you were to try to change the point of view of this personality with facts, it would not alter their view whatsoever, no matter how true the factual information was. So number five, surrounding such a personality, we will find cowed or ill associates or friends who, when not driven actually insane, are yet behaving in a crippling manner in life, failing to succeed and things like that. Such people make trouble for others. And unjustly, we seldom see the antisocial personality in any institutions. We only find their friends and family there. So they drive them crazy. So number six, the antisocial personality habitually selects the wrong target. Now, this means if a group seems to be treated unfairly by the local government, they protest and then all the others who support it are, are ridiculed. Now, the antisocial uh, – number seven, the antisocial cannot finish a cycle of action. In other words, when they start projects, they can't complete them. Now, number eight, many antisocial – Persons will freely confess to the most alarming crimes when forced to do so, but will have no faintest sense of responsibility for them. So it's like uh, their actions have little or nothing to do with their own volition. Things just kind of happen and there's no sense for correction or causation or they, they just don't feel any sense of remorse or shame for it. Also, number nine, the antisocial personality supports only destructive groups and rages against and attacks any construction or betterment group. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, the terrorists need to be understood. We need to treat them with compassion. Uh, but the police are killing unarmed minorities or the police are bad and rioters are just expressing their rights. Um, or like the local representatives make the laws, but the police are targeted for enforcing them. These are just some examples. Number 10, this type of personality approves only of destructive actions and fights against constructive or helpful actions or activities. So, for instance, like we give guns to uh, drug cartels in order to catch them using illegal weapons in the U.S. when they cross the border. Or uh, we build a wall to protect the citizens from drug cartels crossing the border. So uh, number 11, helping others in an activity which drives the antisocial personality, it actually drives them berserk. Activities which uh, destroy in the name of help are closely supported. For example, the Food and Drug Administration making natural medicine treatments for cancer illegal in the United States, not only and, and only allowing for surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation treatments. So under the guise – and this is under the guise to protect the public from witch doctors and quacks when in fact natural treatments have been in use for thousands of years and are very effective. The antisocial personality has a bad sense of property and conceives that the idea that anyone owns anything is a pretense made up to fool people. Nothing is ever really owned. Like the statement, the hard work that you put into building your business is not yours. You didn't build it. The government did. Or your children are the property of the state and can be taken away from you at any time and you have no rights to them. As we go through this list, we can see that there are uh, there are 12 attributes that are listed in the book and, and they're pretty good. A couple of them are similar to each other. For instance, the um, – 
helping others in an activity that drives the antisocial personality in which they they want to destroy things or the uh, the type of personality that approves only destructive actions or the personality that supports destructive groups and fights against betterment groups so you know those are those are similar and we'll talk about those a little bit later um, when we start comparing them to the responses to the FISA memo. So here's here's an interesting interesting thing with the um, with the FISA memo is that uh, it's it's based on just facts, and we'll go into that here in just a minute. So now that we have a basic understanding of the different types of personalities, we're going to take a break. And when we get back, we are going to look at the FISA memo and take each attribute from the list above and see how it relates to this memo. I'm Ken Lee. You are listening to The Way of Energy on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Welcome back to The Way of Energy, how emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. I'm your host, Ken Lee, and you are listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If you'd like to be part of the discussion, you can call in using the 866-451-1451. And please grab a pen and write this down. The number again is 866-451-1451. Now, before we went on our break, we were talking about the attributes of the antisocial personality as described in the Scientology Handbook, Causes of Suppression by L. Ron Hubbard. And I would recommend that uh, if you can't get a copy of that, it's got really good information. Now, as I said before, the attributes of the antisocial personality cannot be used all by themselves to identify this personality type. You must also consider the attributes of the social personality to form your conclusions. Because to attribute one side to anyone would be dangerous and irresponsible. So it is much more important to identify the social personality than the antisocial personality. One then avoids locking up the innocent out of mere prejudice or dislike or because, some of, because of some momentary misconduct. Now, there are times in everyone's life when we have demonstrated one or more of the antisocial traits. Now, this is normal behavior at certain energy levels and emotional tones. The problem comes when we get stuck at any of these levels. So looking for social attributes is vitally necessary to form accurate conclusions as to personality types. Now, when making comparisons, please consider the following attributes of the social personality. 
Now, the social personality, number one, the social personality is specific in relating to circumstances. In other words, they will say, like Joe Jones said, or the Star newspaper reported, and give sources of data where important or possible. He may use uh, general words like they or people, but seldom in connection with attributing statements or opinions of an alarming nature. Number two, the social personality is eager to relay good news, but reluctant to relay bad. He may not even bother to pass on uh, along criticism when it doesn't matter. He is more interested in making another feel liked or wanted than disliked by others and tends to err towards reassurance rather than towards criticism. Now, a social personality passes communication without much authorization and if deleting anything tends to delete injurious matters. So, for example, he does not like to hurt people's feelings. He sometimes errs in holding back bad news or orders which seem critical or harsh. And uh, number four, treatment and reform work very well on the social personality. Whereas the antisocial people sometimes promise to reform, they just don't. Only the social personality can change or improve easily. It is it is a, enough to just point out the unwanted conduct for the social personality to completely alter it. Criminal codes and violent punishments are not needed to regulate social personalities. They just kind of want to get along with everybody. Number five, the friends and associates of the social personality tend to be well, happy, and of good morale. So a truly social personality quite often produces betterment in the health and fortune by his mere presence on the scene. Isn't that awesome? And the very and at the very least, he does not reduce the existing levels of health or morale with his associates. When ill, the social personality heals and recovers in an expected manner and is found open to successful treatment. And number six, the social personality tends to select correct targets for correction. In fact, he fixes a tire that is flat rather than attack the windscreen. And in me mechanical arts, he can therefore repair things and make them work. Number seven, cycles of action begun are ordinarily completed by the social personality if possible. In other words, they complete projects once they start them. Number eight, the social personality is ashamed of his misdeeds and reluctant to confess them. He takes responsibility for his anger or for his errors and does what he can to correct it. Number nine, the social personality supports constructive groups and tends to protest and resist destructive groups. In fact, um, for example, American businesses are more a priority than foreign businesses. Number 10, destructive actions are protested by the social personality. He assists constructive or helpful actions. For example, we have too many, if we have too many government regulations, the uh, president can use the executive order and cancel these burdensome regulations and policies. Now, the social personality, number 11, the social personality helps others and actively resist acts which harm others. For instance, we will support legislation for a pathway to citizenship for 1.2 million illegal immigrants and at the same time build a wall to protect our citizens from violent criminals crossing the border. Number 12, property is property of someone to the, lo to the social personality, and its theft or misuse is prevented or frowned upon. Now, for, for example, the tax cut will give working families thousands of hard-earned dollars in their pockets and help them raise to greater heights than ever before. So as you can see, the differences are actually opposites. If, uh, you know, one does one thing and the other does the opposite, the comparison is the difference between good and evil. So now I'm sure as I read through these attributes, some ideas or visions showed up for you and you probably made some comparisons to events you have experienced in the past. Uh, and that's great. Because And that's exactly what I want you to do. But keep in mind that we are not making a diagnosis here. We 
we'll leave that to the doctors of mental health. And we're just making observations of human behavior and comparing them to elephant elements that um, make up these personalities. It's just information and you can do and form your own or your own conclusions. Now that we have a basic understanding of the different types of personalities, we're going to take a break. And when we get back, we're going to look at the FISA memo and take each attribute from the list above and see how it relates to this memo. I'm Ken Lee, and you are listening to The Way of Energy on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Leip's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back to The Way of Energy. How Emotional Energy Guides the Way We Live Our Lives. I'm your host, Ken Lee, and you are listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If you'd like to be part of the discussion, you can call in by using the number 866-451-1451. Please grab a pen. Here's the number again. It's 866-451-1451. Now, before the break, we were talking about the attributes of the antisocial personality and the social personality, as described in the Scientology Handbook, um, Causes of Suppression by L. Ron Hubbard. And now we're going to discuss the attributes of the social personality and how it relates to the FISA memo. Now, we're going to go line by line and number by number. So number one, is the memo relating to specific circumstances? Yes, it has names, dates, specifically names Department of Justice and Federal Bureau of Investigation, specifically refers to the use of the FISA memo uh, during the election cycle. It names uh, Carter Page, James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Sally Yates, Dana Bonetti, uh, Rob Rod Rosenstein, Christopher Steele, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Glenn Simpson, the Yahoo News article by Michael Ishkoff and Fusion's GPS. So it is specific in the circumstances. Now, number two, does it relay good news and seem reluctant to relay bad? Well, yes. The statement, it raises concerns with the legality of certain DOJ and FBI interactions and represents a troubling breakdown of the legal process. See, there's no mention of it being a constitutional crisis or it being a silent coup, an obstruction of justice or anything about criminal offenses or anything outside of their actual concerns. Does it contain alterations and deletions injurious or injurious information? 
Well, yes, it specifically directs to the FISA application and those involved with no emotional overtones, such as disgraceful constitutional crisis, Trump haters, or the deep state. Uh, number four, treatment. Well, that's not uh, applicable here and the health of friends and family, and that's unknown uh, according to this. Uh, so uh, were correct targets identified? Uh, yes, specific people, places, and times. Nothing is referred outside the FISA investigation. Many of those, of many of those mentioned above. Now, were cycles of action complete? Yeah, the process of releasing the memo was followed and completed. It was reviewed by the DOJ, the House of Representatives, members of the FBI, and other intelligence officers. Then it went from the Intelligence Oversight Committee to the president and then back to the committee for release to the public. And that's a completed cycle of action. Does it take responsibility for errors? Well, yes. During the review process, there were some grammatical errors that were noted by people that reviewed it, and those uh, errors were found and corrected uh, as soon as they were noted. Uh, number nine, does it support constructive groups and protest destructive groups? Yes, and that is the purpose of the memo. The constructive group for this memo um, was the, uh, the the Trump campaign and the, um, the 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 group that put together the memo, and the protested destruct destructive group were those at the top of the DOJ and the FBI. Uh, number 10, destructive actions are protested. And that's yes. And this is the essence of the memo. It's its use of a news report and an operation opposition research paper being used to authorize a FISA warrant does not meet the minimum requirements for FISA. Uh, or the elements for that warrant, i.e., the premises of the target must be under the open and exclusive control of a foreign power. And the target of electronic surveillance is a foreign power or an agent of a foreign power. Also, it must provide that no United States person may be considered a foreign power or an agent of a foreign power solely upon the basis of activities protected by the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. So there are some areas that, uh, that need to be looked at a little closer. Number 11, helps others and resist acts to harm others. And again, this is the reason for the memo. The investigation into the Russian collusion has harmed the credibility of the president of the United States. Number 12, property is the property of someone. Yes. Now, this is talking about the privacy and surveillance. So the privacy of our home should not be the target of the federal government without proper oversight and a legal warrant. The target premises, like it said, the target premises must be under open and exclusively under the control of foreign power. So as we can see here, this member – this memo correlates mostly with the social personality attributes. As I read through the memo, I didn't see anything but simple facts laid out in a flow that was easy to see that – and it was easy to see that something wasn't right from the start of the Russian collusion story. The facts are simple to follow and it shows a bias against the candidate Trump and offers – and, and efforts from those in the federal law enforcement community breaking integrity to support their favored candidate. Now, integrity – now, let, let me explain this uh, and define it because integrity resides in the ability to constitute yourself as your word, to be true to your principles and ultimately be true to yourself. So if you give your word that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, then that means you administer equal justice under the law, no matter what your political leanings. If you are going to turn your head the other way for one crime, then you must show the same consideration for the other. Now, this reminds me of a movie I absolutely love, uh, Billy Jack. Now, it's a story of an Indian half-breed, it's their words, not mine, who left society to protect a school of students and Indians on the reservation. 
Well, one day he rode up to a corral of Mustangs that had been rounded up by a local rich man named Posner, uh, along with uh, one of the deputies. Well, some words were exchanged, and Posner said to Billy Jack, he said, now, now, he said, now hold on there, Billy. We have the law here. And Billy Jack replied with this very profound statement. When the policemen break the law, there is no law. And this is absolutely true. And this should be the, the, the outcry of every decent human being in the United States. Now, another interesting thing about the story of Billy Jack is uh, some people think that Posner was the bad guy. Well, after I reviewed it from a different point of view, um, actually, it was the sheriff who was the bad guy because the sheriff, even though he knew all of these things were happening to the reservation, to the students at the school, to the uh, Mustangs that were being rounded up uh, so that they can make dog food, he did nothing about it. So he was one of those good men that stood around and did nothing to stop these crimes from being from happening. So and that that is something that uh, that we all need to take a look at when good men stand around and do nothing, then bad things are going to prevail. Now we see the FISA memo lines up with a social personality. And when we get back from our break, we're going to take a look at the FISA memo and take each ac ac attribute of the list above and see how it relates to comments made by people before its release. I'm Ken Lee, and you are listening to The Way of Energy on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. -E -E and play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page -page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Welcome back to The Way of Energy, how emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. I'm your host, Ken Lee, and you are listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If you'd like to be a part of the discussion, you can call in using the number 866-451-1451. Please grab a pen. Here's the number again. It's 866-451-1451. Now, before we went on our break, we were talking about the attributes of the FISA memo and how it relates to social personalities. Now we're going to discuss the attributes of the responses given by individuals before the release of the memo. Now, according to Chicago CBS, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi blasted President Trump and House uh, Republicans for their decision to release the controversial four-page memo alleging abuses of surveillance authority by the Department of Justice and the FBI, saying it would ultimately cause a constitutional crisis. 
He has abdicated his responsibilities as commander in chief to protect the American people by protecting our intelligence sources and the rest. And she said of Trump, if the president uses this fake, horrible release of distorted intelligence as an excuse to fire Deputy Attorney General Rod Ro Rosenstein or Special Counsel Robert Mueller, it would lead to a constitutional crisis. She continued to say that Representative Devin Nunes was a stooge for the president and the information was cherry picked. It's appalling. It's misrepresentation. It's a distortion. They're not representing the facts. Now, consider this for a moment. The president of the United States can fire any appointed person in the Department of Justice and the FBI. It's his constitutional authority. Both departments work for the executive branch and he controls them all. So firing them would be within his rights. Now, consider why a person knowing the powers allotted the president would say that he does not have the duty and responsibility to fire those who are not working in the best interest of the country. It just doesn't make any sense. So right here, we see projection in progress. No one, not even the president, said anything about using this information to fire anyone. No one in the DOJ, no one in the FBI. She projected this idea onto others. Now, in a tweet, the former FBI director, James Comey, he called the memo dishonest and misleading. He said that it damaged relations with FISA and destroyed trust. Uh, which I, I agree. It probably does do that. Now, Senator Dick Durbin, uh, he also took to Twitter and criticized the memo. He actually sent a letter to the president warning him that using the memo as an excuse to fire Rosenstein, Mueller or other Justice Department officials could result in a constitutional crisis of the kind not seen since the Saturday night massacre. Wow. Why would anyone want to release this information after all these warnings? Well, let's see. Because of time, we'll have to go through this list pretty fast, so please bear with me. As, as they're speaking, are they speaking in broad general generalities? I would say yes, because cherry-picked is broad, constitutional crisis. What are those things anyway? What does it mean to be in something like that? Does it deal mainly in bad news, critical or hostile remarks, invalidating and general suppression? Uh, I would say yes. It's because they, they said it's totally fake. Uh, it's horrible to, uh, release of distorted intelligence, calling Nunes a stooge and Dick Durbin warning the president. Number three, is the communication altered to worsen? Well, yes, implying and projecting the idea that the memo would be used as an excuse to fire Rosenstein or Mueller or Justice Department officials or, and saying that it exposes classified information. Now, nothing I read was any different than what had been leaked to the news over the past year. So number four, treatment reform, that's unknown. Condition to people around them, that's unknown. That's irrelevant here. Uh, number six, did they select the wrong target? Well, yes, of course they did. The target for this memo is the use of the FISA court to spy on American citizens, particularly the presidential candidate. The target is not anyone in particular named in the memo. Number one, it says it raised concern with the legitimacy of – a legal of and legality of the Department of Justice and the FBI interactions with the FISA court. And number two, it represents a troubling breakdown of the legal process established to protect American people from abuses related to the FISA process. So they're missing it completely. Does it finish the cycle of action? Well, if we look at history, we see that the budget, immigration, infrastructure, border security, well, they have all been talked about for this stuff for at least the last 40 years. So it's not finished. So I would say they can't finish the cycle of action. Uh, number eight, uh, confession to alarming crimes when forced to do so. Well, there's no faintest sense of their of their responsibility here um, because uh, we don't know if they're going to confess to any crimes or anything like that. So this is uh, – we won't know this until sometime later. 
Uh, number nine, supports destructive group and rages against and attacks constructive or betterment groups. Well, this is clearly a yes, because the, the memo identifies concerns and abuses of the FISA process. It should be applauded that they want to look into this. Any abuses of the federal government should be looked at in, into very closely. It's like, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, like the news that the uh, federal government was using the IRS to suppress freedom of speech on its citizens of the United States. Now, that would be a great story, right? Now, do, do they approve only destructive action and fight against um, constructive or helpful actions? Yep, we would have to look at their past for that, and I'd say uh, making it mandatory to purchase insurance versus making it uh, available to sell across state lines. Yeah, I think that's an example. So, okay, so this is some of the information that we're going to talk about and that we've been talking about. So now we can determine who is most likely out for our best interest. And I will have my final thoughts about this when we come back from our break. I'm Ken Lee, and you are listening to The Way of Energy on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses. Mystical. Present. Past. And future. All in one. Wild. Free. Domestic. And healing. For everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Hey, welcome back to The Way of Energy, how emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. I'm your host, Ken Lee, and you are listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Now for my final thoughts, uh, what I call the bluff, the bottom line up front. Now we covered a lot here, and I hope you have a little better understanding of how to identify people who are worthy of your trust. We discovered the FISA abuse memo was bringing attention to possible government abuses of public trust at the highest levels of the FBI and the Department of Justice. We listened to the claims by opposition forces and, they were, and their discussions of constitutional crisis, destroying the public trust, and claiming no responsibility for their part in it. We were shown that suppressive persons are at the highest levels of our government and using their power to undermine the will of the citizens of the United States for reasons not currently available to us. Now, the information in the book, Causes of Suppression by L. Ron Hubbard, is truly helpful, and I recommend you get a copy and read it for yourself. Who knows? You may learn something about yourself or someone you know. Again, I'm not promoting any religion here. I am just giving you information and you use it as you will. Now, the bottom line up front is that the responses to the memo 
are more in line with the suppressive or antisocial personality, as evidenced by their outrageous claims that it would be used to fire personnel at the DOJ and the FBI when no claim of doing so was ever made, and then tossing around the idea of it being a constitutional crisis. Now, observing the other side, the releasing of the memo is more in line with the social personality, keeping to the facts and not bloviating information t for impact or attention. It kept to the facts and being specific about references. Now, the memo could not be could now the memo could not disclose everything. It was not meant to. It was meant to shine a light in a place of darkness and unanswered questions. Questions that must be answered if we are going to regain our trust in the government agencies that are supposed and purposed to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States and its people. Of course, we always must consider our education and viewpoint as we evaluate our world for proper responses. We must also consider our emotional energy and tone level at the time of our experiences, too. All these things must be considered when responding to any situation. If you don't, you can fall into witch hunts and following rumors to identify your truth. And the truth is never inflated with verbs or adjectives. It is a statement of what is. Now, we live in a world where it seems the media is designed to keep us in a state of confusion, anger, and fear. But we can free ourselves from these illusions as we learn how emotional energy influences our lives. Now, most of the information transmitted through the media is actually projections cast from the observer. It is their point of view and not of the subject they are referring to. We have examined details from various current events and discovered the emotional tone uh, for many involved. For some, this knowledge may be difficult to accept, but I believe by revealing the emotional components of the events will be empowering to the benefit of all humanity. Emotional energy is a big part of our understanding of our world, and opening our eyes to it can help us uncover something inside us, perhaps a strength we didn't know we had, and insights that never came to us before. Understanding gives us the courage to evaluate our beliefs in a way that can open the door for positive change, not just for us personally, but across all human dynamics. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you again next week when we will analyze another exciting event. I'm Ken Lee, Love and Light. This has been The Way of Energy with Ken Lee. The key to success is applying the optimal solution without violating the rights of others. This idea creates a win-win situation across the greatest number of dynamics. So join Ken each week here on The Way of Energy. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.